I know I say this every month, but can you believe it is September already? But you do know what that means. It's time to talk about the books coming out in September of 2019. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your work week. Um, in the US here, most of us had yesterday off. I actually took Friday off too and had a four day weekend. It was phenomenal. I did almost absolutely nothing. I didn't even really leave the house. I read, I walked my dogs, I cuddled my dogs, I napped, I watched TV and I ate. That's all I did. And it was wonderful. I absolutely, absolutely loved it. And I cannot complain. Um, but what are we here to do today? Because this video is going to be long if I don't hurry up. These are going to be the, this is going to be part one of my September 2019 releases. Why part one? Because there are so many amazing books coming out this month that I had to separate it into two videos or the video would be so long. So today we are going to be talking about books that are coming out today, September 3rd, 2019 getting my dates mixed up there, and next uh, Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. So as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. Also, if you can, order these books from your pre-order uh, pre or order these books from your local independent bookstore and or have your library order them for you so you can get your hands on them as soon as possible. We better get started so that I can get this video done for you guys before it takes an hour. The first book, and I think one of the big books of the month, is going to be The Secrets We Kept by Laura Prescott. This is out from Knopf. I got this copy actually at um, Book Expo America, and this was one of the books, one of the buzz, adult buzz picks for Book Expo America. This book is fantastic. I've already reviewed it in a read and reviewed video. You guys know I absolutely loved it. This is set just post World War II. It's really split into two different storylines with one combined motive. We're in the United States here. We are with um, a group of women that work inside the CIA and one young woman who is being trained sort of as a spy and or as a person as a covert operative to do different things for the United States government. She is trained at first by um, one of the men and then later by a woman who sort of comes in to teach her the art of how she has been a spy through World War II. The other half of the story is the creation of the work, the great work of Russian literature, Dr. Zhivago, which during the time of the Soviet Union as it was being written, that author was under immense pressure not to publish the work because it was thought to be anti um, government, anti sort of the current regime of the Soviet Union government. Um, what it turns out to be, this is a story of the United States trying to get a copy of that book in order to publish it in Russian and get it out to the general public is sort of propaganda against the Russian go communist government. We also have the story of that book and the relationship between the author, um, Boris, and his sort of muse slash the woman that he truly loved and how um, their sort of relationship and things that are done to them by the government in order to keep this book from coming to fruition. Um, there's a lot in this book. I'm not going to go into it because I've already read and reviewed it, but it is excellent. It is like a political spy thriller with a literary twist. Um, the characters are so well flushed out. You are going to be completely bought in. It is so good. I flew through it. So again, we're on September 3rd. This comes out so you could get it today. The Secrets We Kept by Lara Prescott. This is from Knopf and it is worth your time. Also, a book that is definitely worth your time, if this is up your alley, is um, The Harp of Kings by Juliette Moliere, and I'm saying that wrong, I know I am, and this is coming out today from Ace here in the United States. Um, she is one of those authors that is prolific. Everyone was telling me so much to read her, and I finally got this pre-release uh, copy, and I read it on one plane trip. It is so excellent. This is the story of a young brother and sister who are currently, at the start of the book, they are training and want to get accepted into the school of warriors and spies and all that kind of stuff, and they're put on a mission um, before they've even graduated to go to a kingdom to sort of hunt down the harp of kings, which has gone 
missing. Now the harp is a mythical instrument that is played at the um, crowning of the most recent king. And as it's played, it's sort of the spiritual and or um, folkloric nature that keeps that promises a fruitful reign for the king, but it has gone missing. So our group goes there and it is their job to find out what has happened to the harp and the reason and the politics between it all. There are druids, there are fairy folk, there is just a fantastic fantastic plot in this book and I was I flew through it and it is not a small book and I read it on a six hour flight from Atlanta home and I just flew through it it was excellent it was my first by her and I am so excited so this is the harp of kings it is out on September 3rd if you are a fan of Juliet's you must get your hands on it it is so very very good if you are new to her like I was this is a great place to enter because it is standalone at this point and it's just a great story with a great world I really loved it so again the harp of kings okay what else is coming out? It's September 3rd, we have The Glass Woman by Caroline Lea. This is out by Harper on September 3rd. This actually sounds really interesting. It's sort of like a tale, uh, a take on the Jane Eyre. I was just, you know, prepping for this video and I was like, why haven't I read this one already? Um, this is the story of, I want to say, her name is Rosa. Sorry, I was trying to get her name there. This is the story of a young woman who names Rosa. Her father is passed and her mother is ill. So she enters into a marriage with a traitor and in order to sort of economically save her family. She gets um, into uh, the relationship with him and winds up moving far, far north um, in a Nordic land. It doesn't say in the description exactly where this takes place, just the Nordic countryside. Um, but what happens is she gets there and her husband is very rarely home. He is traveling all the time and he had a first wife and she had sort of a mysterious disappearance. There is an attic in the house that she is forbidden to go into. As she sort of develops her life, she starts to hear the stories about her husband and about the house and about the first wife and all of that sort of starts to come to fruition is maybe what she knows about the man that she's married is not exactly what she thought she was told. Um, this has sort of a vibe to me, and I have no idea if this is true, but it kind of sounds a little bit like a take on a Jane Eyre sort of story, um, but I'm totally bought in. I think it sounds fantastic. So out from Harper on September 3rd, The Glass Woman by Caroline Lea. This is out in the UK under a different cover, but I think it is out at the same time so you should be able to get your hands on it if it's not already out I can't remember exactly the next book is there are some great YA titles coming out or middle grade fiction titles coming out this month so if you have a YA or middle grade fiction reader in your life this is going to be a great month for you and this is strange birds a field guide to ruffling feathers by Celia C Perez and this is out from Kokila K-O-K-I-L-A and this is the story of four younger women who come together. Three of them get an invitation to go to this mansion, I believe, mysterious, to this lavish mansion to, and a promise of adventure. And they meet a fourth young woman there. They don't all know each other. They don't all immediately get along. But their goal is to infiltrate the scouts that is a local scout group there and sort of be able to create their own scout unit. Unit, And it's sort of a, I love the last line of this. It says, in their quest for justice, independence, and an unforgettable summer, the girls from their own troop form their own troop in something they didn't know they needed, sisterhood. I think it sounds adorable. I think this picture is adorable. I'm all bought into this. So that is Strange Birds, A Field Guide to Ruffling Feathers by Celia C. Perez. And this is out from Kakala on September 3rd. Okay, this is a book I feel like I've talked about a few times on my channel already, and that's Small Silent Things by Robin Page. This is out from Harper Perennial. This is sort of two stories told in tandem. The first is the story of Jocelyn. Jocelyn is a married woman with children. She lives on the West Coast, but she originally came from the East Coast, and her um, she had a very tragic childhood. Her mother has passed away, and as it says here, um, that her clothes hide a secret. She has these scars on her back. We don't know what they're from, but they hide a secret. And it says that um, she believes this to be a fundamental stain, something she believes invited her abuse. She also has a secret, a blossoming obsession with her tennis coach, Kate. 
The other part of this story is Simon, Simon Bonaventure. He is a Rwandan refugee, and he is also haunted by his past and his daughter and wife who were killed in the genocide that occurred in Rwanda. And then all of a sudden he starts to get contacted by a woman who says that he is her, she is his daughter and wants to know why he left her. Those stories are going to connect as you can probably imagine. I think that sounds really, I really love this cover too. So that's Small Silent Things by Robin Page and this is out from Harper Perennial. This is a book that I picked up at, um, Book Expo America as well. And the reason I picked up All the Better Part of Me by Molly Ringel is that this has a bisexual male main character. And I haven't seen or and or read a ton of novels that with that representation in it. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. I don't know much about her. I know she has other books out, but I think that I'm interested in this. And so this is the story um, of Sinter Blackwell. I don't even know how to say that first name. S-I-N-T-E-R, Sinter. Um, he's a 25-year-old American actor working in London where he's sort of enjoying a flirtation with this woman, Foyona, that he is working with. But he also has a relationship with his gay best friend in Seattle. I think Alex is his name. Andy. Sorry, wrong name. Um, he decides to return to the U.S. to see if there is something between him and Andy, and things start to come to fruition between him, his family, and all of the relationships that he has going on. And it says here that um, choosing the right role to play has never been harder because family complications soon force him into the most consequential decision of his life. I think it sounds pretty interesting. I don't know much about it, but that's All the Better Part of Me by Molly Ringel. This is out from Central Avenue Publishing, and again, out on September 3rd. Is it, do I have one or two? Two more books coming out on September 3rd. I told you guys, this is a book month. This is a great book month. I've actually started The Nobody People by Bob Perel. This is out from De Del Rey Books. This is sort of a um, superhero teen um book. This is about a group of young kids who are superheroes who um, have superpowers, but they are being um, uh, profiled and attacked in sort of a racial sort of bigotry tone. And they come together. It says, I don't know a whole lot about what happens. I've only read the first 50 pages um, and I was really getting into it. Um, there are a few of the ordinary nobodies with astonishing gifts who must now band together against bigotry and fear, even as one of their own actively works to destroy a fragile peace. With their combined, will their combined talents spark a much needed revolution or an, an apocalypse? I just, I, this book was so interesting to me in this idea of using those powers to create an independence. I think if you guys watch things like the X-Men or something like that. You see, there's always sort of this discussion regarding um, bigotry and racism and all that kind of stuff. So it's very interesting to see this in a novel form. So that's The Nobody People by Bob Porel, and this is out from Del Rey Books. The last book that is coming out on September 3rd that I have here with me is Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. This is out from Bloomsbury. Isn't this cover just gorgeous? This is the story of a young girl. Let me see. Her name is Amara. All she wants to do is visit New York City for her birthday so she can see where her father came from. And she goes and she lives in Harlem and she doesn't immediately connect to New York City and or Harlem and it says that um, as she explores asks questions and learns more about Harlem and about her father and family history she realizes how in some ways more than others she connects with him her home and her family so this is some places more than others by Renee Watson and this is out by Bloomsbury this is the last book coming out on September 3rd okay are you guys ready for September 10th because those were a lot of books I hope you guys wrote down all of them because they sound fantastic the first book that I'm going to tell you about is Lost in the Spanish Quarter. Again, we are on September 10th by Heidi Goodrich. This is out from Harper Villa. I will tell you this book in its published form has an amazingly different cover and it is gorgeous. This is just the proof copy. Uh, when I met Heidi Goodrich, she originally wrote this, was writing a book in English. 
And when she finished it, she didn't like the way that it was. So she wound up actually writing the book in Italian. The book was published in Italian. And then she took that book in Italian and translated it into English, what gets us Lost in the Spanish Quarter by Heidi Goodrich. Um, and this is the story of two young people. They're two university students. Um, Heidi, who is an American um, studying linguistics, and her first love, Pietro, a geology student from a farming village. And it's really about their relationship. And the third, it sort of says in the blurb that the fir third character is really the Spanish quarter and how that location and those people and that culture come to affect this relationship and the relationship between these two people. I have a feeling that this is going to be one of those books that just has makes you want to travel because you want to be there. So that's Lost in the Spanish Quarter by Heidi Goodrich. This is out by Harper Villa. And again, this comes out on September 10th. Do not look for this white cover because the cover of this is absolutely gorgeous. It's bright and beautiful and just absolutely lovely. Okay, a book that I have just finished, which will be in a read and reviewed soon, that is also coming out on September 10th, is The Last Train to London by Ma Meg Wyatt Clayton. This is out also from Harper, and this book was fantastic. Just set just before the start of World War II, this is based on the true story of a woman who really, her goal was to get as many children, Jewish children, out of Germany and Germany-occupied countries like Austria as she could so that she could save them and make sure that they were not killed during or she didn't know the war was coming but she knew something bad was coming um and this is that story this is also the story of a young boy named Stephen. he is a, he lives in vienna austria with his family he is a jewish teenager um when the um german and the nazis take over austria and his life is as you can imagine drastically changed um, and he is sort of on hiding away. Um, his father is taken away. His mother is very ill. He has a younger brother. And this is the story of his resilience in surviving what is going on in Austria as the Germans take over. Um, I will tell you, as you guys probably are very, very well aware, um, there's a lot of sadness in this book. There's a lot of really awful things that happen, but it really is a story about hope and how one person, just a single person can make a decision to really change the world we live in. So there is a lot of hope and happiness, but there's also a lot of sadness in this book. And I absolutely loved it. So that's The Last Train to London by Meg Wyatt Clayton. Meg is actually local to me. She lives in Palo Alto, I believe, according to her um, bio I read somewhere, which is like 25 minutes away from me. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to see her when her book launch occurs. So that's The Last Train to London by Meg Wyatt Clayton. If you are looking for amazing historical fiction, highly recommend. A book in translation that is coming out this month is The Star Starlet and the Spy by Ji Min Lee. This is also out by Harper. This is a fictional account of an actual event occurred that occurred when Marilyn Monroe was in Korea for a, um, a trip with her husband. I can't remember who she was married to at the time, but she is there um, and she goes on a sort of a USO tour. And this is the story about her relationship with the young Korean woman who is chosen to translate for her during her duration there. Um, I don't know much more about it. If you guys um, have want more of a review for someone who has actually finished it, um, Britta over at The Second Shelf has actually read and reviewed this book. She really liked the sections regarding the translator Alice and um, that part of it. She has a lot to say that's very interesting. Um, it's a slight little book, but that's The Starlet and the Spy by Ji Min Lee. This is out from Harper. Oh, I should tell you who translated it. Sorry, that's on me. Chi Young Kim. So translated from the Korean by Chi Young Kim. There you go. Okay. This book is just, I really picked it up because I'm a huge Emma Donahue fan, but I don't know a ton about Akin, which is her new novel. Now, Emma Donahue wrote Room, which a lot of us read and absolutely loved. But this is the story, I think this is also set right after World War II. I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't give me a time period. But this is the story of Noah. He is in his 80s, I believe. He's a retired chemistry pressure professor and widow living in Upper East Side, when, um, but born in the south of France. 
Um, he is about to visit Nice since the first time since his childhood, and he's bringing a group of photos that he found that belonged to his mother in the hopes of piecing together a sort of um, a puzzle regarding his mother's history and his family's history. When he receives a call from child services that a long distant relative, a nephew of his, needs somewhere to go, someone to take care of him, and that is Michael. He agrees to take Michael on this trip to Nice with him, which leads me to believe this must be a book set in the past because it would be very difficult sporadically to take a child out of this country. <laughs> but <laughs> that just, just thoughts that popped in my head. When they get there, um, they wind up in Nice and they really wind up diving into this family history. But he and Noah and Michael really sort to, at the beginning, they're at an off of their relationship, but they come together and they begin to learn about their own family history. And as, as the truth comes to light, more things come to light than they were expecting. So that is Akin by Emma Donahue. This is out from Little Brown and this is out on September 10th. Okay, just a couple more books, guys, coming out. Sorry, this video is rather long, but these last three are worth your time. This is Pet, and I'm going to hold the author's name up there because I always struggle with it. They go, um, they were the writer of the novel Freshwater, which was fantastic. So many of us have talked about, and this is their first YA novel or middle grade novel. Um, and this comes out on September 10th, but I'm going to read you the back of this one just because I can't do it justice. So it says, there are no monsters anymore, or so the children in the city of Lucille are taught. Jam and our best friend Redemption have grown up with this lesson all their lives. But when Jan met, meets Pete, a creature made of horns and colors and claws, who emerges from one of her mother's paintings and a drop of Jam's blood, she must reconsider what she's been told. Pet has come to hunt a monster, and the shadow of something grim lurks in Redemption's house. Jam must fight not only to protect her best friend, but also to uncover the truth and the answer to the question, how do you save the world from monsters if no one will admit they exist? I think that sounds amazing. I love this cover so, so much. And so this is Pet I'm gonna, by Akwiki Amazi. And I always struggle on your first name. I'm so sorry. This is their first middle grade novel. And this is again out on September 10th. Okay, the penultimate. This is Tinfoil Butterfly by Rachel Eve Moulton. This is coming out from FSG's MCD imprint. All you need to know about this is that this, the back of this book says this is the Shining Meets all about the boy. <laughs> and if you combine those tunes about a boy and The Shining, you think, how is that going to come together? Um, this is the story of a young woman. Let's see if we can do this. Emma, she is hitchhiking across the United States. She has a tragic and violent past, as you can imagine. As happened, she meets someone who is helping her, who she thinks is going to help her and is sort of innocuous. And it, it turns out that he is not a nice person and leaves her on the side of the road with nothing out of but an out of gas van, a loaded gun, and a snowstorm on its way. She goes into town, it's an eerie town. She goes into a diner where she meets a young kid in a tinfoil mask. And he has asked her, because he has stolen her gun, to help him get rid of George. George. I don't think we're gonna know exactly who that is, but that is how this comes together. So if that sounds great to you, I, the cover is super duper creepy. Um, that's Tinfoil Butterfly by Rachel Eve Moulton. And again, this is out from FSG's MCD imprint. Last but not least in this video is a book I am very excited to get to, and that is Out of Darkness, Shining Light by Bettina Gapa. Kapa? I'm not sure how to say this. Now, she was long-listed, long-listed for the Man Booker not that long ago for her novel, um, The Book of Memory, which I read and I liked. I didn't love, but I liked. And I'm super interested in this one. This is a fictional account of the people who took Dr. Livingston. Now, Dr. Livingston was a famous English um, explorer who explored a ton of parts of Africa. And this is about the group of people who took his body and all of his things from one point in Africa, I want to say it's like 1,500 miles, to another point in order for him to be taken back and buried 
in England, told from two perspectives. One is from his cook's perspective, ha um, Halama, who is a sharp tongue cook, so I think she's going to be sassy, so I like her, and Jacob Wainwright, a rigidly pious freed slave. That's the two narrators of this book. Um, I started this actually, and it's going to be one of my September reads. I was like, you know what? I want to wait a little bit closer till when it comes out. And now it's right upon us. So that's Out of Darkness, Shining Light by Bettina Gaffa. This is out from Scribner Books. I am not going to try to hold all these up like I usually do because that pile would be so large. But I hope every single one of these books winds up on your TBR and you are excited about a bunch of these titles. As always, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, I couldn't do this without you. Thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, I hope this video makes you stick around. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye!